30 Eastern, USC and Notre Dame here on NBC. You will be impartial, I presume? Absolutely, always am. I don't expect to see any green jerseys, though, by the Irish, do you? All right. That was uh, one of the many milestones. I was once talking uh, to Lou Holtz when he was the head coach here at Notre Dame. We were talking uh, about the uh, Michigan and Notre Dame rivalry before their game with the Wolverines, and he said that nothing is like Southern Cal Notre Dame, the greatest rivalry in college football. Well, when you grow, I grew up in Southern California, always wanted to play, and the game was lucky enough to play in three of them, and you, you still talk about them, you still think about them, Dave. It is the best game in college football. It ain't the right, either team is a dominant team this year, but still a special game. A little different though, John McKay, the old, my old coach, passed away this uh, past June, so it's going to be a different Notre Dame week. New Rockney taking his team uh, by train to the West Coast. That must have been quite an adventure. Third down and eight here for the Irish. West Virginia has used its final timeout. Jones carries, late tackles, and the clock rolls. Well, with a 10 point lead, I, I, I don't think they'll try to field goal, would you? I think they just no. just run it out. I mean, and give the ball over on downs with. Use as much of the clock as you can, probably maybe take the penalty. Fourth down and seven from the not near 25 yard line. The play clock will take us down to one minute. And it looks like they will take the delay of game penalty. And should call a timeout to stop it with one second left. So they milked the clock, used as much as they could. Stop it at a minute for one. Yeah, and Notre Dame really ground it out today. When we came in the top of this show, we said that West Virginia is one of the top teams in terms of number of plays run in the course of the game. They averaged 82 plays a game. Today, only 60. Well, let's take a look at our Chevrolet players of the game. Avon Colburn from West Virginia, Carlisle Holiday from Notre Dame. Big afternoons for each of those, especially on the ground. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each school's general scholarship fund. The Chevrolet scholarship program, a college football tradition for over 30 years. Well, Holiday may have won it, but he better take his offensive line out. Take Kurt Vollers out for being another big old state. <laughs> Carlisle can't afford to feed Vollers. <laughs> <laughs> so the Irish will meet Southern Cal here on NBC next week. Then they'll go to BC, and then the Tennessee Vols come calling November 3rd, the final home game against Navy here the 17th, and then closing on the road at Stanford, and then against Purdue in that postponed game mm -hmm. as the Boilermakers suffered their first loss of the season today at Michigan. And on the 25th, West Virginia must travel to Miami then meet Rutgers, Syracuse, Temple, and Pitt. I give Bob Davies some credit. He takes enough grief by Irish fans. His team was 0-3, kept his team together, never lost the faith in his players. Holiday's going to throw on fifth down, and they have it to Jones for the first down. <laughs> what do you say? Let it rip. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he, he deserves a smile. But uh, he was... Everybody's least favorite coach around here for a while, but you know he, he did a great job. I think of keeping the team together And uh, kind of an ugly win last week, but this is a much improved team from two weeks ago and He should be happy And scoring 34 points After scoring only two touchdowns the first three games and they got some big special teams today, too, for the first time this year. Special teams, kicks off, kick off defense create yeah. turnovers, the formula for success mm -hmm. again this week. A nifty little onside kick. Yep. Mm -hmm. New wrinkles. Opening up in a nickel defense against that spread Rodriguez-directed West Virginia offense. And for Rich Rodriguez trying to find the right personnel for his offense. It's kind of like, you know, going to Idaho and eating carrots. I mean, it is sometimes a mismatch between, between you know, his personnel. He didn't have quite the right personnel to run his offense. So. What do you mean when you come to Indiana? Well, when I'm out with you, it's usually a steak. <laughs> And the final seconds will tick away without the Irish running another play. And they have won their 
second game in a row after losing their first three. Bob Davey and the Irish beating West Virginia by 10, 34 to 24. And the Mountaineers gave the Irish all they could handle for most of the game. It's Rodriguez and Bob Davey exchanging handshakes at midfield. Once again, the final score, Notre Dame 34, West Virginia 24. Don't forget, we'll be back next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, to bring you one of college football's most storied rivalries, Notre Dame and USC. And tonight on NBC, Spy TV returns with back-to-back -back episodes, followed by the golf comedy Happy Gilmore, starring Adam Sandler. So for Pat Hayden and Matt Vesgersian, Tom Hammond saying so long from Notre Dame Stadium. You've been watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Tomorrow. Ball to start the second half, and here comes Kenneth Pullen returning for the Cardinal, and he comes up just about to the 15-yard line. So it's not very good field position for Stanford in their first possession. And coming out to pull the trigger is Randy Fasani. Comes from up the road at Granite Bay. He was the senior starter. He went down in the second quarter at Oregon. He's 9-4 as a starter, and he has been out since the Oregon game. Coming back last week for one play, scared his coaches to death when he pulled it down and took off and ran for a 14-yard gain. Terrific competitor, though, Keith. That's exactly why he ran the ball. The single back is Brian Allen. And Fasani rolls out at the five-yard line, wants to throw, under pressure, gets it away, completes the pass to Allen. And Brian Allen coming up the sidelines with a big play, out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. You may have noticed there that Brian Allen was wearing number 30 because uh, his memory of his lifetime friend Rashidi Wheeler, the Northwestern player who uh, died during practice before the season back in Evanston. He saw the mobility of Fasani even with that knee brace and the banged up knee. He bought some extra time, went back and actually found his third receiver. And that's what he does. So some of that on that last play. Kenneth Tolan, T-O-L-O-N, is in the ballgame right now, and he is the deep back number 26. And uh, the ball is given to Tolan, looks for daylight and finds it over the left side and pops free. It is now a quick race to the corner and for a touchdown. 42 has an angle on him, and Shane Walton runs him down. But he's down all the way at the 11-yard line. So Tolan... 6-1, 190-pound sophomore explodes up the middle. Boy, Tolan made a nice read when everybody overran the play. Now watch his read here. He sees it. He cuts back against the grain, gets back into the secondary, breaks a tackle there, and then Tolan just took off. But a great read there by cutting back against the pursuit and actually letting them run themselves by the play. Gain of 52 yards on the play. It looked like he might have run out of gas at the end of it. He hasn't played all that much this year. Brian Allen is in there at the tailback spot. Fasani steps up and throws a bullet to the end zone. It's incomplete. Intended for Teo Johnson. Teo Johnson had the ball down around the belt buckle instead of being way up in the air where only he could reach it. Your backs and receivers, we told you the story of Ryan Allen and number 30 tonight. Casey Moore is your fullback. Ryan Wells starts at the wide out, and he shares that position a lot with Teo Johnson, and the little guy, Luke Powell, is in there as well. The middle of the offensive front, Heitman, Quacha, Schindler, all big guys, all experienced, all senior starters, and they know every move of each other. Ball goes back to Brian Allen. He goes straight ahead and picks up three yards to the eight-yard line. So it's bringing up third down now for Stanford. The Irish defense, that's your front right there. Weaver Campbell, Hilliard, Irons. The linebackers, Boyman, Harrison, and Watson. And the secondary, Walton, Israel, Sapp, and Duff. Notre Dame is 11th in total defense nationally, but... Stanford is just prolific. It's a very balanced attack. They average 39 points a game. Third down. This is where they look for Taylor Johnson. Jump ball in the corner. 
Posada's looking for him, can't find him. Pressure's coming, pulls it down and takes off. He's not going to get there. He slides down at the 12-yard line. And it's Mike Maselli time. Anthony Weaver was the man, the big senior from Saratoga Springs, New York, chasing him, and he lost his footing. Boy, he as was we, looking for Teo. As we told you, uh, it's rained very hard all today, and uh, the footing is tricky. There's Teo Johnson right there. It is a mismatch. They usually throw him a jump ball. He's recovered pretty well. Then he starts to slide with Fasani and still says, hey, get me the ball. But at that point, Fasani's sliding and just getting down and giving the opportunity for the field goal. Vassell is in for a 29-yard try. The senior from Sparks, Nevada. <laughs> Got it. Montez Duff, a uh, cornerback for safety. Ball drifting to the sidelines. It's taken by Duff. He's coming up the sidelines. He's wide open. All by himself. Stanford got pinned in the middle, and Baselli, the kicker, finally brought him down, and he almost broke it. Stanford got trapped as a unit in the middle of the field. Now here's John in New York. Keith and the Burger King update. Washington, well, they coughed up the ball early. Cody Pickett tossed an interception. Clinton Portis makes him pay. Seven yards on the touchdown run. And Miami, just about a minute into the game, grabs a 7-0 lead. Keith. Ball is on the 48-yard line. That news will get no clapping from this side of the country. Yeah, and Miami doesn't need any help. You don't <laughs> turn the ball over when you're playing down the hard side. Right. Good grief. We've seen enough of that. We saw it today in the Ohio State-Michigan game. And here comes Notre Dame's running game. Julius Jones comes pounding over the right side and picks up a first down as he gains 13 yards on the carry. Tank Williams, the safety, finally brought him down. There's a look at Carlisle Holiday, 6'3", 218-pound sophomore, 548 yards rushing, and he averages almost five yards a carry. He's thrown for two touchdowns and, what, seven interceptions. Yeah, he is. he's an athlete. Just needs to make better decisions. Stands up and throws. Throws wide, throws high. High and wide. Pass incomplete intended for David Gibbons, the backs and receivers. And I told you earlier, all the running backs are dinged up some. Julius Jones is in there starting. There's nobody behind uh, Tom Lipinski at fullback, really. Gibbons is also a bit gimpy, but he's okay. Javon Hunter and John Owens. Here's the offensive front. You've got Fain in the middle of it. Black and Mayhan on each side of him. Bowlers and Curtin are the tackles. Arnez Battle is in the ball game. Remember him? He was at quarterback, and now he goes in motion as a wide receiver, and he gets the ball into the middle. It's handed off to Julius Jones as they come back on a straight drop, giving you the impression they were going to hand it to Battle, but they did not. The Stanford defense set him up with Matt Leonard getting back into action. He was laid up for five games of the bad back. The linebackers are Gabriel Fredericks and uh, Coy Wire. Coy still playing with that bad shoulder and arm. And the secondary, Tank Williams, is the leader back there. Carter and Fernandez are the corners, and they're not very big. They're square and thick, but they're not tall. It is third down and seven for the Irish. The ball is down on the 36-yard line, and uh, Holiday again throws high and wide to Javen Hunter. Boy, not very good throws there. Two of the three were pass plays. He didn't step into it. He didn't look like he was throwing it with any kind of authority. I don't know if that's nerves or whether he just hadn't gotten into the flow of the game, but they weren't very well thrown. The ball is at the 36-yard line. And let's see what Notre Dame wants to do with it. They're going to put it. They're going to kick it. Joey Hillbold, he is out of Centralville, Virginia, a junior, trying to pooch it down there and kill it deep, and he's knocked it all the way into the end zone. Browner and guys like Chris George, guys that play defense so aggressively at Notre Dame that always make big plays. Second down, 11. They send Tolan in motion. Masani stands up, throws low, incomplete. As intended for Ryan Wells. Never had a chance to catch it. Now, Courtney Watson, the linebacker, got in his, his lane, his passing lane. I think that disrupted him a little bit. Had to readjust his, his throwing motion. 
Only Tony Rice has run for more yards in a single season at quarterback for Notre Dame. And uh, Daryl Campbell is the man shaken up right now for the Irish. And uh, you give me just. Play. And they go to the single back and spread him out to pull him the single back. That's Powell, the little guy, number six. Masani being chased, runs away from the pressure, gets some help, gets it away down the sideline. It's caught. It's caught by Luke Powell, number six, and there's a penalty flag. There's a flag far across the way, and you're probably going to get a foul on Notre Dame, it looks like, for jumping on Fasani. It's exactly right. It's going to be rough in the passer, and again, you see Fasani's mobility even with the bad knee. But even more importantly than that, you see the, the receiver skate with him when he's in trouble and he's rolling like this. They go that direction, too, and there's the late hit. Got an elbow up around the head, too. That made it an automatic. Yeah, but watch. You see Powell. He runs his, his uh, post pattern, but then sees Fasani continues to roll, so he continues to go all the way across the field, all the way to the sideline. Well, I don't know. He was in the air, and, and you, you have to give him some kind of leeway. Dykes on the safety blitz was in the air, trying to get up in the vision of Fasani and just landed on him. I think that little action around the helmet, though, is what yeah, got the play. Yeah. Intended. Obviously, I don't think it's intended. It just happened. Right. 43 yard line. First down for Stanford on the Irish side. And Fasani back again, trying to get big points here in the first quarter. He's got Luke Powell, and it's almost intercepted. Yeah. Terrific play by Duff going up to slap it away, and he had it in his hands for a moment and couldn't handle it. Yeah, Fasani got away with one there. Ball is thrown a yard longer. He probably got six. You know, we talk about Randy Fasani. You saw that late hit. Well, why do they want him protected? Because he's been hurt so much. This was the roll-up last year. He injured his knee. Fasani has had problem with that knee. We told you against Oregon he was on fire. Here it was October 20th. This was the play where he got hurt. And again, he just got it under, a, under his body and, and twisted in the wrong way, and he sprained the MCL. Colin, no place to go. He is hit in a hurry by Terrell Harrison. Ball the Irish, one of the linebackers, just about the line of scrimmage, and here's Todd Harris. Well, a little bit of <coughs> which number 30 is you point. Yeah, what? She sustained last week against Cal, and the shoulder Haven't pads he was wearing were not providing week. the protection, so they had to send a trainer into the locker room to get a new pair of shoulder pads. So he's been sitting on the sidelines just waiting for his new shoulder pads. They just arrived, and he'll be going in probably in the next series. You mean they didn't know that? That would drive me crazy if I'm missing plays while somebody goes and gets some equipment. Justin Faust is the deep back now for Stanford. And Fasada getting the heat. Down he goes. And it's a safety blitz again. It's Dykes. Dykes. Yep. So Donald Dykes gets the big sack, and they'll go to the punt, and we're off to New York City and John Saunders. Keith, we told you Miami scored. Well, Washington comes right back. Fourth and goal, but guess what? Go for it. And Cody Pickett got tripped up, caught up with the center and the feet. And they come up with nothing. So Miami still leads it 7 0, Keith. That looks like the Huskies. They do that a lot, but they tend to hang around. Julius Jones and Eric Johnson are the people involved in this play. Johnson punting for Stanford. Jones waiting for the ball, and the ground is very soft. It's been raining. Eastern, five Pacific, the Duck to Pepper Big 12 Championship. And that scenario changed dramatically as well over the last two days. Carlisle Holiday taking that ball and scooting around with it. Here's the BCS standings now. Nebraska losing, Oklahoma losing today. Miami's playing right now. And look at what might happen with Florida and Oregon. Well, they, they've climbed right back into it, haven't they? Yep. Michigan, Michigan lost today as well to Ohio State. You're going to have what Colorado and Texas playing in the Big 12 championship game. So that'll alter the landscape a little too. And the Oregon State Oregon game next week gets bigger and bigger. Old Civil War. Second down on the five yard line. And Holiday says, well, I don't need a timeout. I've got to shuffle my car. Holiday, your quarterback. It is second down and 10. 
Ends the ball to the deep back Julius Jones and Jones squirts through there for five yards. Last season, Warwick Don and Marshall Falk held center stage in a terrific ball game between St. Louis and Tampa Bay. Well, they'll do it again on Monday night. We can't promise you the same stars, but we can promise you a pretty good football game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the St. Louis Rams on ABC's Monday Night Football at 6 Pacific time. The Irish have Gibbons way at the bottom of your picture. He's wide. They go to a shotgun formation. Holiday steps back two steps. Now pulls it down in a hurry and wants to take off with it. And he's going to get a first down. He got up across the 20 yard line, kept on tiptoeing down the sidelines, and they're going to give him a lot all the way down to where. Notre Dame ranks 31st in the country in running the football. They don't throw the ball very well. But they show a pass formation here, and it looks like they're going to pass the ball. And I think they had intentions of passing it. But all of a sudden, here comes Holiday, who says, Look at this space over here. So that's where he's going to find the open area and pick up the first down. Everybody goes to the right, he goes to the left. Watch, stays in bounds here, picks up about another five yards. He is a talent. He's just young. He's just learning. He got but 10 he's very yards. athletic. Let me after he eluded that one tackle. He got 10 more yards all the way out to the 30. He's got a lot of confidence if he wants to leave all of his buddies and go out there by himself. Now he sets up the throw. And again, he pulls it down in a hurry and takes off and gets caught this time from behind. Brought down by Matt Leonard up around the 35-yard line. Injury report now from Todd. Well, keep the story on Daryl Campbell, number 60. Notre Dame is saying it's an injured left knee. They don't know how extensive it is. They've taken him in, and they're going to give him x-rays. But, you know, as soon as you bring out the x-ray machine, it's not a great sign. Keith. It is not. 35-yard line, second down and five for Notre Dame. Stanford leading in the ball game in the first quarter, three to nothing. Got that full house back to you, and then break that. Simply takes forever to get them to work, but then once in a while, everything will fall in place for you, and they blow the windows out, like Oregon State did to Washington a couple of weeks ago. This is Julius Jones, and he's very quick when he's healthy, and he's picked up about seven or eight yards on that carry. Coy Wire on the tackle for Stanford. Well, I tell you what, he comes up, he comes up limping too. Watch the explosion here, the offensive line. Watch how they come out, they'll pull. They also trap. This time they just slant, get a good fullback block, and Julius Jones takes it up. He's an interesting runner. You know, he missed spring practice last April. He missed summer ball, and he's been nicked up a lot this season. But when he gets going, he is a talent. 612 yards this year. Sheets of rain again sweeping through Stanford Stadium. And a lot of tickets are laying on tables in warm, dry homes. I think for this game. They go to that three deep bone and uh, run it right up the middle for the first down. Get it up on the 41 yard line. Colin Branch made the tackle on Julius Jones. Jones is out of Big Stone Gap, Virginia. And you know, so a lot of running backs coming out of Virginia these days, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. You know, and his, his brother is Thomas Jones, who's uh, with the Arizona Cardinals, played at the University of Virginia. Julius Jones was one of the most highly recruited athletes in the country. Came to Notre Dame with so much promise and hoopla, and he had that great freshman year. And I, I think it was almost unfair. The expectations people had for him just rose. Starting the ball, break it up, and Gibbons goes wide to the left. That gives him double wide at the top of your picture. Holiday turns and hands it off to Jones, and Jones over the left side for two yards. We're at four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Three nothing ball game. Got that big offensive line at Notre Dame. It averages 305 pounds. The shortest guy is Man of Fane there at 6'3. And right now, all they're doing is zone blocking, just trying to go up against that smaller defensive line of Stanford and blow them out of there, slant a little bit if you can, get some leverage on them, move them out, and give Julius and Holiday some running room. It's a pretty good Terrence, drive right here. Terrence Howard, the senior out of Willingboro, New Jersey, checks in at the tailback position now. Jones is out. So he apparently has damaged that ankle again. He's been pulling that thing around for a while, but he had 117 yards last week. Here comes uh, Holiday down the line, pitches it outside to Howard, and Howard will get across midfield and to the Stanford 49, and 
That's very close to the first down. In fact, it may be as Fernandez pushes him out. Just again, they slant down there and they run the option. Every lineman's coming down this way. And then he's going to come right here. But here's the problem. He's going to force the pitch. Now roll it. Watch Tank Williams. Read it. Now he'll come up on Holiday. He forces him to pitch. And by this time, Howard's outside and picks up some pretty good yardage. This is an effective offense. And the option is always a great neutralizer when you're young. He's close, huh? Yep, I think so. Gordon Reese is the referee and signals first down. Notre Dame. The rest of the officials are Walt Wolf, the umpire, headlineman's Jim Rennie, Roger McMinn, the line judge, side judge Larry Farina, Matt Gilchrist, the field judge, and the back judge is Gary LaFora. Going to have to get an update on Julius Jones. You know, he's had that Achilles problem. It's really been sore. He had a big week last week against Navy with 117 yards, and they thought he was over the hump with the injuries, but he limped off th three plays ago and hadn't come back. And hit in the backfield on the option run down the line. Anthony Gabriel makes the play for Stanford. This defense is active. Now watch this. They'll try to go to the top of your screen. They go away from us. And the linebacker, Gabriel, just reads it. Comes across. The pitch man's taken. Gabriel comes through untouched. Here's another guy that's been playing with a bad back. Gabriel's been banged up. But they took the pitch man away instantly. That, that's what the Stanford defense has to do. It's individual coverage. One guy takes the pitch man. One takes the quarterback. Well, that puts him up there on a uh, on a five-man front right now. And that's probably what we're going to see a good bit on the second down and long. They try the inside track, and there's not much there. Talking to Davey yesterday, Bob Davey, about... Uh, way things are at Notre Dame right now and the kind of dragons that have been chasing him all this season and the kind of trouble that you have at a university like Notre Dame at Stanford in places where academics have such a high premium. Uh, he put it this way in, uh, in, in discussing the subject. In some ways, uh, this may shock people, we are like a military academy in some ways. Uh, when you combine our academics and the fact that all of our players live on campus and so on and so forth, we have to be a disciplined offense. We have to be able to run the football. Which is, uh, has to do with the fact that they are running the option offense. And here's a slant thrown inside to Omar Jenkins, and he's going to score. The Irish take the lead as they run a simple slant. Jenkins, a big guy, came down the middle of the field, made the catch, and broke a tackle and was gone. Great read by Holiday. They came with a safety blitz. There was nobody in center field. So you send your slot over the middle. Reads it. Nobody in the middle. Once you get by the nickel back, Taylor, 15, you're gone. Jenkins out of Dallas, Texas. One of those young guys, just a sophomore with a big touchdown. Big guy, too. He's a 200-pound-plus guy, and he's got great speed. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So they go 95 yards in 11 plays and take the lead at 2-12 to go in the first quarter by 7-3. to three. Checking out digital. Then they bring their safeties on a blitz. Watch this. They come hard and there's nobody in the middle of the field. Man to man coverage on the wide receiver. And once they got by the nickel back with the pass, there was nobody in the middle. And Omar Jenkins took it the distance for the touchdown. They outsmarted themselves, brought Gabriel, their linebacker, out, brought Taylor the nickel in, and it cost them. That's Jenkins' first career touchdown as a Notre Dame football player. 200 pounds sophomore from Jesuit High School in Dallas. Brian Wells and Kenneth Tolan are the deep people for Stanford as Nicholas Seta kicks off. Back to the one-yard line. And it's Tolan. And Tolan gets the 21. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team, Chevrolet making a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The rain is just coming down sideways now. Really coming down hard. That's some fierce winds during the course of last night, too. Snapped a lot of trees and branches around here. Gordon Jack is in there, number 92, replacing Daryl Kemble for the Irish defense. Justin Faust 
and Casey Moore are in the backfield. Katana gives the ball away to Casey Moore, and Moore gets one of his infrequent carries and makes the most of it. Casey comes all the way out to about the 43-yard line. And Bob Davey is uh, shouting something at a couple of his guys about uh, breaking down or something, but he was out on the field and he was raising his voice. Watch this block on the corner. There's nobody in containment. And once he gets outside, then you have to have your your corner 34 Duff has to lay the lumber to him. But boy, you lost flood control, so nobody's contained. He gets outside, boom. Maybe uh, Bob was saying, "Way to go, Duff." Ball is in the air, and it is incomplete intended for Luke Powell. He turned back inside trying to track it down, but Luke is only 5'8", the book says. Uh, you walk up to him, and you think he's more like 5'6", or 7'. Maybe. Pisani was just trying to get some air under it. This was not a pretty pass. He was wobbling like a dead duck, but it threw it over his outside shoulder when he was looking inside and then had to adjust on it. Guy's got that kind of agility and speed, though. If you can get air under it, sometimes good things happen. It is second down and ten from the 42. Ball is handed off to the tailback, Justin Faust. Faust is another Texan playing football on the West Coast, a 200-pound junior from Arlington. Notre Dame plays a lot of man coverage, man-to-man -man defense. And when that happens, the cornerback has to have great technique and positioning is critical in that situation. But I can guarantee you Stanford is going to take its shots deep with both Wells and Powell and Johnson all night long because they're not only playing man to man, but they're pressing man to man up at the line of scrimmage. On third and seven, Bassani swings it out to the right side. The ball is caught. That looked like a lateral uh, close to it. Courtney Watson brings down Justin Faust. Faust the tailback. And there's a loss on the play, and Stanford's going to have to punt again. So after that first possession, Notre Dame's defense has handled them. Talk man to man. Who's got to take the back out of the backfield? Read your keys. There goes your back. There's Watson, 33, follows him, mans him. Nicely done. Watson, 6'1", 232, runs pretty well. Already has one interception and two sacks this year. Eric Johnson punting. Julius Jones is waiting for it. 48 yards on his first punt tonight for jo uh, Johnson. Kicks out of there, low kick, not a very good one, but it takes a bounce in favor of Stanford, goes down inside the 30, and returned out to about the 32. Tremendous ground game that Colorado has developed. We'll see how Texas handled it. And they stay inside looking for something inside, and it's about two yards before. Holiday gives it away to Julius Jones. Look out, Jones is around the corner and on his way, and he's not going to get there. And caught by Reuben Carter, one hand kept him from scoring. Well, you talk about containment. When you lose it, you're in trouble. And Stanford lost it, and Jones made him pay. Watch the blocks on the corner. Everybody cuts it off. Jones has it. And then all he's got to do is outrun the secondary. Julius Jones playing with a bad Achilles, but still has some pretty good wheels. Here's the guy that ranks 21st nationally in all-purpose yards. He's got 96 already in this game. 59 yards on that play. And they stack him up and give it back to Jones. He's still got some wind, and he dives down to the five-yard line. Anthony Gabriel made that tackle. So he picked up on that play uh, about three yards. The only problem Julius Jones has had were the high expectations. Then he's been banged up, and he's put the ball on the ground four times this year. But outside of that, he has just been spectacular. He's a quality back, and right now he's given Notre Dame all it needs. Here comes your option. And they moved again.
Look at Notre Dame. Last year they had the fewest in the in the nation. They were tied in NCAA record all time. Now you see what they did this year, and they're just turning the ball over with 11 fumbles, 10 interceptions, 21 in total, and that'll drive a coach crazy. And it has driven or driven Bob Davy nuts this year. Fisher's out of the ball game. They go back to a single back set with Jones. Ball is on the 10-yard line. Jones gets it and goes back to the five. Anthony Gabriel makes that tackle. And it'll be third down from the five-yard line. Notre Dame has not been outstanding in the red zone. This is a team that hasn't capitalized as often as it should when they get down close. 22 for 36. And out of those 36 trips inside the red zone, only 13 touchdowns. You've got to do better than that. Here comes a critical third down for the Irish. Mike McNair is in there at the fullback position now. Jones is deep. And uh, Gibbons joins the party in the backfield. Goes to Jones. Oh, he is locked right at the line of scrimmage by Coy Wire number 22. He came through and just locked him like a trap. All right, you've got one of the best field goal kickers in the country. Get in there and get three points. You have to wonder why this guy is not going like this. That's your tight end. You've got the whole right side of your field to play with, but instead they go with a straight eye, the old Tom Nugent eye, and just run off tackle with Julius Jones. Not the most creative play you want down inside the 10. Nicholas Setta is in for the field goal try of 22 yards, and he's had a pretty good year. 12 out of 13 with a long of 47 that touches a &M. Plenty of leg on it. It drove it right through there. And so the Irish. Deep trip way back into the end zone, and uh, they'll touch it down and come out to the 20. And here is Times Square Stadium, John Saunders. Thanks a lot, Keith. Miami trying to make sure they don't stumble like Nebraska or Oklahoma. Clinton Portis, his second touchdown of the game. This one for 30 yards. Look at the speed as he reaches the 10. Miami now has jumped in front of Washington by a couple of touchdowns. And that fourth and goal decision are really looming large early on. Keith. Yep. It does. First down and uh, 10 for the Stanford Cardinals with Brian Allen finally getting the right shoulder pads and he's in motion. And Fasani puts it in the air down the sidelines. It is caught by Theo Johnson and Johnson is going to have a first down for Stanford up close to the 45 yard line and that was a nice push off. Yeah, he did get away with a little push there. That's pretty good positioning, though, by Duff. Here's your matchup right here. Now, you let him roll. Now, look at this. Use your sidelines. Play him inside out. That's good technique, good positioning. But Teo pushes him away. Pushes Duff. He's free. Makes the catch. Just like playing the post. Hey, listen. Anything that's not called is legal. Amen. In today's world. And he's learning to be a really, really good receiver and using all his all assets. Ball is up on the 45. The ball is given to Brian Allen. Allen finds a little bit of daylight and will fight his way to the 50-yard line. That's a pickup of seven yards on the carry. There are a lot of big receivers around this world today, and uh, most of them are basketball size. There's Teo Johnson. He's six foot five. Great leaper. There's Mike Bush, who played in a basketball game for Washington State Tuesday night. Reggie Williams of the Washington Huskies, 6'4. And he's a great leaper. Charles Rogers had a big game today. 6'4 for Michigan State. And Fred Gibson, University of Georgia, 6'4. So he got a lot of big leapers playing wide receiver in college football. I'll take those fives and tour the country with a round ball and the short pitches. Tall and agile. Here goes Brian Allen, runs into a stack on the left side, and uh, there's, no, there's not even a crack, much less a hole. Anthony Weaver leading the defensive surge for the Irish. Still giving up big plays. Notre Dame tried to avoid that. They want to stop the run. They want to pressure Fasani. They've had success doing both, but they're giving up big plays. And that's killing them. They'll play two or three really good plays. They'll stop Stanford, and all of a sudden, they'll give up a 20 or 30 yard play. It is third down and a short yard now for the Cardinal, and there's been Tolan in. He had that big 52 yard run that set him up for their field goal, and he is the deep back with Casey Moore, the fullback, behind Randy Fasani. 
Fasani on the quarterback sneak gets the ball across the 45 yard line down near the 44 and that'll be a first down. Now let's have the Aflac trivia question. This week's question, name the only Pac-10 team that Notre Dame has never played. And I'll give you a hint. They're going to play them in 2003. <laughs> Put it right on the 45. That's where they mark it down. Wiggs first down for the Cardinal. There's your big guy Johnson on first down. Tolan stays in. Got to know where Teo is. Ball goes to Tolan trying to get to the outside. Does get around the corner. And he's pushed out of bounds by number 20, Jerome Sapp. Otherwise, he's dancing in the end zone. All right, so we circle Teo Johnson. Now they didn't throw the ball to him, but he's the guy that made that play work. You know why? Because he released, everybody followed him, and then the ball carrier went to the vacated spot. All right, here he goes. Now Teo Johnson's at the top of your screen, and all this space here is open because of Teo Johnson running out the, the defensive backfield. 27-yard line, where it's first down for the Cardinal, and they go double wide to the right side. Luke Powell's up there at the top, a little guy, number six. Hassani back has flushed him out of the pocket now, and he takes off. Drops his head and goes down at about the 23. He, and I'd much rather see him slide yeah. feet first. That's a tough thing to teach college kids. They're so aggressive, and, and they just, they rather try to pick up yardage than, than give up and slide. But you're right, especially in his condition with his knees. Well, he with took his knees. A, a double whack that time from uh, the two linebackers, Harrison and Hilliard. Now you see he's missed seven games to injury and their record sure. three and four. Yeah. What is that phrase you got? Uh, that those get hit like that make you gives you jingle joints in a hurry. <laughs> That's right. That's why you play defense so you can give them rather than receive them. Second down and six. Persona gives it to Tolan. Tolan finds a little bit of daylight in the middle and he's right about the first down marker. <laughs> He's gonna gonna mark him a yard short. Well, you've got Monday Night Football on ABC's presentation of the NFL. You got the St. Louis Cardinals sitting atop their division, and you got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trying to get back into things in theirs. And that'll be at six o'clock Pacific time here on ABC Sports. Down in the red zone where they like to throw that jump ball to Johnson, but they just took him out of the ball game. They've been having su success running. And then the little receivers with man-to-man -man coverage have had better success. Now you're getting a third down and two. Could be a pretty good sized play right here. Tolan tries to go over the right side. I don't know. That's very close. I don't think he made it. I don't think he did either. He kind of ran into the stack and tried to bounce, and there was no bounce. Got good pursuit, too, from Notre Dame. Watch the push by the white shirts. And then the pursuit once he gets to the line. There's your first hit, your second hit, and three white jerseys around it. And they're looking at fourth down. Fourth and a little short two. Hilliard and Watson, Boardman playing pretty well right now in that defensive front for Notre Dame. You got two fullbacks in there. Newberry and Moore. And they slip and fumble. And the ball's rolling around, and the Irish pick it up, and it rolls around some more, and it's... A greasy pig, and now they say Notre Dame's got it out on the 32-yard line. That was not a very clever possession. Jared Newberry, fullback in there, never got his traction, never got started. And in the process, they dropped the ball, and eventually the Irish get it. They bring Boyman up like a fifth lineman. Now, if you watch the back, and Newberry's going to slip right there, loses the timing of the handoff. And if Fasani tries to get it, and then it's Boyman right there who picks it up, and then you mentioned like a, a greasy pig. <laughs> I can't get a handle on it. It's like a bar of soap. Turnovers usually cost Notre Dame, but here they cost Stanford, and it's driving Fasani crazy. Well, there was a big hole in the middle, too, for that, uh, to pick up that first down. They could very well have made it into the middle, and both teams are running the ball inside a lot. Trying to set up the outside, and once you get them set up for the outside play, like you saw Junior Jones a while ago, they get big things out of it. Travis Pfeiffer made that tackle for Stanford. Right now, you want to just keep giving it to Julius. You want to keep melting that clock. You've got the lead. You're playing away from home. Time of possession now is critical. 
Ball is on the 34-yard line, second down and seven. Will Wishbone with Holiday carrying it. And he gets it across the 35 out to a one linesman is way up there on 39-yard line. He's not only quick, but he's strong. 6'3", 218. Coy Wire made the tackle. Take a look at the Dodge Drive summary. Notre Dame, the last three possessions, they had to punt on that first one. But they moved the ball fairly well. They had that big play in that drive. Then they came back with the touchdown. When they found themselves, they had man coverage. The safeties came on a blitz. They found the open area with Jenkins, and he took it the distance. And then with that field goal, you have to ask, was it right, the right play calling down inside the 10, but they still came away with three points in the lead 10 to three. Tony Fisher's in the backfield now, having joined the, the group as they set up on third down and two. Holiday coming down the line with it. Hip pitches, and they stop him short of the first down. That was a pretty good play by Holiday as he was hit by Ryan Fernandez. Now here's John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Keith, have we mentioned the name Clinton Portis? Two on the ground, now one through the air. Ken Dorsey, five yards on the toss for Portis's third touchdown of the game. And for Washington, a huge hole against the best team in the country. 21 to nothing is the lead. Keith. You know, I was surprised when the so-called prognosticator said Miami would kill them and they beat them big. And I looked at it and I said, well, I'm not, I think it'll be a pretty good ball game, but I guess they know what they're talking about. I'm not sure they're the best team in the country. Got to prove it. Well, they've done everything that's been asked of them so right far. That's right, they have so far. You've got a timeout on the field with fourth and two coming up at 5.19 to go in the first half. The beauty about here go. It's Luke Powell dancing around trying to get loose and can't do it. They wish on him back there on the 15 yard line. They were trying to take the little guy apart. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take it as it comes or you can grab life for the horn. Dodge. Prudential Financial, a rock solid leader in financial services. Prudential Financial to help you grow and protect your wealth. And Beachwood Aged Budweiser with a crisp, clean, and refreshing taste. Known only to the king of beers. Brian Allen sets up as the single back for Stanford. They've got three wide outs. Hey, oh, Johnson is in there. Fasani throw. Ball is caught by the tight end, Brett Pierce. And Brett Pierce will come out near the 30, 29, and uh, you've got a Stanford man shaken up on the play. It looks like Brian Allen is the man that is not getting up. He's been dinged up too. Boy, sure has. Shoulder and an ankle. This is your guy right here, and he could come right out here. They send the receivers deep. They cross them. They bring him under, and Pierce just takes the open spot, makes the catch, and moves the chains. That's a well-designed play when you take Powell and Wells and send them deep as a clear out, let them fly and then just drag your tight end underneath. Well, they're working on that. Looks like that sore ankle of Allen. That, that seems to be the problem. Yep. That thing's been bothering him for a couple of three weeks. He's a guy with terrific balance and low center of gravity, but you're right. He, he, he loses so much because of that sprained ankle and it slowed him. There's one of the big surprises, I think, of the year, too, is that, uh, that Wisconsin didn't. I thought they were going to be more of a factor in the Big Ten than they were. But they've had trouble all season long, and Minnesota got them today. But there is no surprise going to, uh, to pass Colorado, Nebraska. That was unbelievable. That was just phenomenal. I sat there and I couldn't believe it. Texas, Colorado in the Big 12 championship. Now, I, who would have ever thought that? Well, if Miami uh, pounds Washington like uh, 
a lot of people think they're going to, and they're well on their way to do it. Sure, they're doing it right now, yeah. And then uh, they walk home, I think, unless they go up to Blacksburg and go to sleep. Do they play at Virginia Tech, or is that my, yeah, it's at Virginia at Tech. At Virginia Tech, yeah. Blacksburg. So I don't think uh, they'll be so jacked when they go up there, they won't even know where they are. I'll tell you this, though. Frank Beamer is a fine coach. He prepares he teams very well, and the Pokies are tough to beat right there in Blacksburg. Justin Faust comes into the ball game now for uh, Stanford as Allen has to leave after the ankle injury and the ball is given to Faust and Faust banging around in there will get it out to about the 32 yard line for amounts to about three. The Affleck trivia question named the only Pac-10 team Notre Dame has never played and the answer is Washington State. And they are scheduled to play September 6, 2003. Just tough to get the Irish to go to the Palouse. I don't know why. Little plane trip, a little bus trip. Allen goes out with three carries, 11 yards. The big car ball carries from Poland. 73 like yards. <laughs> <laughs> it is similar. <laughs> Kenneth Tolan has the ball over the left side. Got some daylight. Started sliding sideways, and he may have given up the first down as Sap came across to make the tackle on him. Pulling some guys here, get them out in front. Lead him around. Tolan's the guy that's been really causing a lot of problems. He's now over 80 yards. Actually, uh, seven carries, 81 yards now. But he's a big, strong guy. You get a big blocker in front of him. And look at his. Look at it. He's got. He's got really quick feet. It's like he's tap dancing on a light bulb as he gets through the hole. Bringing the chains out. Not trusting visual acuity. It is a first down by the length of the football, for heaven's sakes. Mark Amedo sitting up here knew it instantly. Got the greatest eyes I've ever seen on a human being. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. It's 10-3, the Irish lead, Stanford. Stanford has a game remaining against San Jose, their neighbor down the road, that many times have given the Cardinal only one. Stanford coming in tonight at seven and two. The Irish coming in at four and five. They want to win this one and then go home, play to do, and at the West Lafayette, maybe get into a bowl game. They go down the sideline to Luke Powell. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Montez Duff. Wasn't enough air under it. Wasn't thrown far enough, and Powell couldn't track it down, and it went right to Duff. Perfect and coverage by Duff, though, Keith. Took the inside of him, stayed in his hip pocket, watch him force him to the sidelines. Now turn and locate the ball. He now is the receiver. Well done. Leading 10 to 3, Carlisle Holiday. Split back formation this time. Holiday turns and gives it away. It goes to Tom Lipinski, the fullback. And Big Tom pounds on up there for about 12 yards on the carry. Again, we, all, we go, I guess, for an update on the Washington-Miami game with John Saunders. Keith, Miami giving us plenty of reasons to cut in right now. Derek McLaughlin, the punter, that was a bad snap. It's Kellen Winslow who comes up with a tackle for the safety, 23-0. Okay, so now you have the kickoff, a big run back, Miami on offense. Ken Dorsey to Najee Davenport, 15 yards, 30 nothing. Well, maybe they are the best team in the country. Terrence Howard pounds in there and gets a pretty good gain out of it. Right now, Notre Dame is taking control of the line of scrimmage. Second down and two on the Notre Dame. At least uh, from the offensive perspective, they are. They're getting big things on first down. This you're looking at second down and two, you're going to win the ball game. Yeah, and Keith, this has been a tough front to run against all year, giving up only less than 100 yards a game. Right now, Notre Dame is just blowing them off the line of scrimmage and picking up chunks at a time. Single back. <laughs> Terrence Howard. Right side yard on that play and not much Tank Williams came up and plugged that hole It should be enough for the first though and right now Notre Dame having its way with the Pac-10 team 
against Stanford. You were talking about Miami. Now, if you look at what teams have done out of conference, the Pac-10 is right up there, 21 and five against out of conference teams, non-conference games. I mean, they have been very, very successful. And if you look at the top four teams, they haven't lost. You throw in Notre Dame. I mean, uh, UCLA, UCLA beat Alabama, beat Kansas, and beat Ohio State. So they have been very successful outside of the conference, certainly one of the best in the nation. But tonight, Notre Dame's having its way with Stanford. Miami's beating up Washington. And did Jim Trussell have a big win today? Or did he have Ohio State? Timeout call by Carlisle Holiday. He looked around, didn't have what he thought he had or wanted to change it or needed some advice. And the best thing for a sophomore to do is go to the sidelines and say, Coach, I'm paying you the big bucks. You make the call. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Show, John Saunders, Terry Bowden will be bringing you scores and highlights from today. And uh, there's plenty to talk about. Polenti. Ball back to the uh, Cardinal. Holiday's pass is incomplete. Thrown too high, and Javon Hunter couldn't reel it in. Reuben Carter was there to whack him, but Hunter had uh, had to have solitude to catch that. That's a nightmare, though, for a receiver. Holiday hangs up Hunter, and then Carter comes over, and this is just a free shot. This is what you love as a defensive back. You get a guy helpless in the air, you just run right through him. Third leading tackler is Carter. Here's your breakdown, passing breakdown. Notre Dame offense, 114th in the country. Stanford defense, 112th. So breakdown is the perfect word. Inept is a better word. <laughs> Be nice. Second down, ball near midfield. Second and 10. There's your option around the corner. And the toy wire and Colin Branch take Terrence Howard out of bounds. Picks up about five yards on the play, maybe six. Stops your clock at 134. Been a rather slow and methodical since the very opening possession when we had the big run by uh, Tolan, and then uh, Julius Jones had a big run for Notre Dame. Otherwise, it's been pretty much grinded up. Yeah, it really has. And there's been so much talk this week about Bob Davey and, and Notre Dame. You know, you don't want to pull for anybody, but at the same time, you, you, you hate to see a guy being bashed like that and punished like that. So it's good to have a little success here. And Notre Dame leading Stanford 10 to 3. That's got to, it's got to make him feel good. And Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator. So many so-called prognosticators now and, and radio sport talk shows and. You got a personal foul called. I think that's what he said on uh, the Irish. They're going to back him up. Well, you talk about a facial expression change. He goes from the smile to the growl. Ball is taken back to the Irish 45. Check out the Irish 40. Second down and 19. Spot foul, six yard gain, 15 yard penalty. It'll be second down, 19. Bob Davies still trying to find out what the penalty is. The back end of the huddle goes Holiday now. On second down and 19, ball is setting on the 39 yard line of Notre Dame. And a very unhappy Bob Davy on this sideline. They go into the shotgun. Move Howard inside to a slot. Uh, loaded up on this side, and he's coming this way. And gets the pass away and throws it out of bounds. As uh, he's flat. Coy Wire got him, Keith, but that's a smart play by a young quarterback, Holiday. In college football, you've got the rule. You get outside the tackles, you can throw the ball away. He's being chased. He doesn't have anybody open. He knows Coy Wire's coming after him. He can feel it. Right now, there's no pressure, but here comes Wire. He just throws this ball 20 yards out of bounds so that he doesn't lose any more ground or throw a pick or take a sack. I mean, third down and 19 now. Yeah, it's, a, it's third down in the cab ride. You can't afford to lose any more yardage, or you put Stanford in scoring position. And you've got a very good chance to go to the clubhouse, leading by seven. 
He's going to take off with it. And they'll take him down at the 45-yard uh, line. And it'll bring up fourth down. And to uh, 14. That's not bad. They got some yardage back. You have one of the best punters in the country. And Joey Hillbold, he averages 44 yards a punt. Stanford calls the timeout here. They're getting the ball back. You've got a minute and 20, so they got time for a couple of plays. Hillbold uh, out of Centerville, Virginia. 5'10", 188-pounder. He's got a uh, big leg. And uh, his career average of right at 42 yards is currently second. The halo Powell, and uh, that's going to cost Notre Dame five yards. They got too close to it. Got to give him two yards to make the catch, and they didn't do it. So that'll cost them five, and it'll go from the 16 out to the 21. And that's where the uh, possession will start. So Fasani out here tonight, not having a good night, but he's thankful he, he's out there and says this. I finally get my chance again. Uh, last time I played was against Oregon. I felt I was. Uh, on a rhythm and everything was taken away from me in, in a second when I tore my MCL but now I get another chance to come back and show people what I can do. A little rusty I think maybe because he's thrown a couple of picks here and uh, a couple of balls have been off target but he's a gamer. He wants to throw. There's nobody to throw to. Now he puts it in the air and it's out of bounds. Luke Powell suddenly disappeared behind two Irish defenders and there was absolutely nobody else available. Notre Dame plays man coverage and Keith right now they're playing it as well as any team I've seen this year. Their corners are hanging there. They're using yep. position. Good technique. That time they were in what they call a cover two where the the cornerback gives up his man after seven yards to the safety. They did it per to perfection. Second down and ten out of the shotgun. Pressure. Weaver. Anthony Weaver made the tackle for the Irish. And there's a loss back to the 20 yard line of four of three yards. And Stanford spends a timeout. So they've got one remaining. And you look at it third and 13 on the next snap. That's Weaver's fifth sack of the year. Comes off the corner, engages, and uses just a bull rush. Comes off his guy, Harris, and makes the play. That is a big, strong play by a 6'3", 290-pounder. Big old number 98. He's a great practice player, and he is a big game guy, and he is going to play at the next level. 72-inch wingspan. So if he gets near you, he's going to grab you. He was taking place with Pisani tonight. He's been hit six times, hurried seven. He's turned it over one time and been sacked twice. Talking to Weaver yesterday, he, you know, he stayed. He may have had a chance to go, but he never thought about it. He stayed his full four years and says this. Why? You know, I see a lot of these young basketball players, you know, they're leaving early and, and they just don't get that college experience. And I know, like, with football, I mean, even if I didn't play football, just think of of trying to go and play a professional or do anything in life without without experience that four years of college, I really don't understand like how they can do that and how they can get through and be successful. Impressive Enjoy guy. the experience because you only pass this way once. He's an impressive guy, isn't oh, he? Yeah. Captain you of the defense. He he is. Third down and 13. <laughs> Gonna run it. Casey. Casey Moore, the fullback, pounding along, but they finally bring him down short of the first down. And Stanford now, with the clock running in 45 seconds or less showing, will have to punt it away. Or if they let it run long enough, they can take the snap and uh, just kill it right there. Now they'll bring out the kicker. The punter. Clock continues to move under 25 seconds. Eric Johnson. Game clock is at 15 and the play clock is at 6. Johnson's third punt of the night, 48 and 33. And whistle stop him. Stanford took a timeout because the play clock was ready to expire. So they take that timeout and it'll give Notre Dame just seven seconds 
to do what it will when they get the ball back and play and punt it. It provides us with about 40 seconds of nothingness, but it's very effective <laughs> <laughs> for the Cardinal. Well, they've used the clock effectively, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Are you surprised by this, Keith? Notre Dame coming in here into Stanford to take nope. the 10-3 lead? Not a bit. I mean, this is a, a Stanford club that's that's been ranked as high as ninth. They're seven and two, and they're playing an Irish team that's four and five that struggled against Navy last week. But at the same time, you got to look at Stanford playing Cal last week, struggled, and that's a big rivalry game, and that takes most of their emotion. So they they might be coming in here a little bit flat. Notre Dame's got it rigged just right. They play Stanford after they play California. They play uh, uh, USC after they played UCLA. So their two trips to the West Coast are well planned, I'd say. Stanford's had three punts blocked this year, and they do it for, you know, West Coast present recruiting. <laughs> Kicks out of there. Not very long, but uh, it's not going to be caught either. It's going to roll around and bounce, and the clock is... Ball goes down to the five-yard line, taken by Vontez Duck, who had a couple of big plays defensively, and he may have another one right here. Loses his balance and falls down at the 35-yard line. Here's Todd Harris. Thank you, Keith. I talked with both the coaches at halftime. Tyrone Willingham said his team was not down after the Cal game, and they weren't lacking motivation. He said they had plenty of motivation. He said the problem with Stanford right now is getting in rhythm with Randy Fasani. He's been out for a few weeks, so he says once the team gets in rhythm with Randy, they'll be fine. And for Bob Davey, he says the team just needs to find consistency on the ground and in the air and everything else will take care of itself keep well that'll solve a lot of problems <laughs> can do all those well things. and he's right because that's what we we're just talking about I mean he <laughs> looks rusty he just didn't uh, never really did find his rhythm from the 35 yard line first down for the Irish to come out of the I formation they go to the beat back Julius Jones as Tim said went for over 100 yards in the first half and he stopped right at the line of scrimmage Take a look at that first half for Notre Dame, and really they were running the ball effectively. First they throw underneath. This is the touchdown we just told you about. Very, very successful because Stanford was bringing the safeties, and they threw to that vacated area. Then here comes Julius Jones. 106 yards in the first half, almost scored on that one. And then the field goal to make it a 10-3 ball game. Notre Dame hitting on all cylinders offensively in that first half. I think the Irish come out here in the second half, believing they can continue to pound the ball at Stanford, though they're going to go to the air right here. The pass is overthrown and incomplete, intended for the fullback, Lipinski. Casey Robin is in there at right tackle now for the Irish. Kurt Vollers, the starter, was ejected in the second quarter. During that incompletion, Julius Jones was trying to block and injured his ankle again as Achilles, so he comes off limping and he comes out of the ball game. And left leg. It's Terrence Howard replacing him in the backfield for the Irish. They flex out and uh, then split out. So you've got basically four wide outs. And working out of the shotgun formation on third down and ten. Holiday just a little quick two-step drop. Comes one down in the middle and he's lucky to get it back. That could have been picked. Yeah, that was a bad, bad decision. He's now one for seven. Ball intended for Javen Hunter. Uh, Colin Branch and Ryan Fernandez had a bet better chance to catch it for Stanford. What a great angle this is, Keith. Look at this. You're seeing it from the defensive side. Now watch. He'll throw it right down the middle, and there are two defenders there. The two safeties come colliding right there. Actually, it's Fernandez, number seven, the corner and the safety, and uh, actually Wire, the linebacker, had gotten back there in coverage as well. Here's the punt. No pressure on him. The punt is away. He'll bowl, and he's a good one. And backing all the way to the 14-yard line is Luke Powell to Stanford. Gets some help on the side and comes out of bounds up around the 26-yard line. Now here's the Morgan Stanley. Well Second quarter after being shaken up. He sprained his ankle, but they retaped him apparently. And he's got the ball right now, running in traffic, banging around and banging away for a couple of yards. Kerry Carter, their big back, is out for the rest of the season with a dislocated or separated shoulder. You have the feeling right now that Stanford has to start mixing its plays better. They've got to get Fasani in that rhythm that he's lacking right now. Throw some dink and dunks. Throw some high percentage passes. 
then start using the backs a little bit. But right now they aren't mixing their plays the way they normally had all year. And they're trailing by a score of 10 to 3 in the third quarter. Sonny back steps away from the pressure and steps right in to one of the Notre Dame uh, down linemen, Grant Irons, defensive end, and Irons takes him down. Another one of those senior leaders. He's a captain, Irons. You know, they wanted to pressure Fasani, and they're getting it done, Keith. I mean, they're getting pressure from both ends. They're getting yep. it from the middle. Chris Lewis has yet to make an appearance in the ballgame. But he may pretty soon. He was the starter and three and one as a starter in the absence of Fasani. Third down and still about 10. Fasani's pass is away to the sidelines. It's caught by Luke Powell. Penalty flag is thrown, but uh, Luke Powell is far short of the first down. And uh, Fasani was banged around, but it's a foul on Stanford for holding. They'll decline the penalty and force Stanford to punt the ball, and the Irish should come out of this with pretty good field position. The Irish right now controlling this ball game offensively yep. and defensively. They have control of the line of scrimmage. Eric Johnson to punt, and Duff goes back to receive it for the Irish, standing back just inside the, uh, right on the 35-yard line. Eric Johnson, the punter, his fourth of the night. Longman was 48. Shortman was 33. Kicks away. Not bad. Up on the 37-yard line is Duck. Splits the middle and crosses midfield and goes down to the Stanford fourth. Gibbons, Gibbons pitches the ball back to Arnez. Battle, former quarterback. Wow, and uh, not bad. Holiday. Uh, Holiday goes down to make the reception. Arnez Battle, remember, two years ago was a quarterback. What a great catch by Holiday. They run the double reverse, send the quarterback out. And you're right about Battle. He's he's the former quarterback that they made a wide receiver. But watch the catch by Carlisle Holiday. Underthrown, goes down, great hands, picks it right off the ground. He is just a spectacular athlete. Earlier we told you he's a 6'6 high jumper. Man, this right here, great hand-eye coordination and terrific hands. Soft hands, tough body. First down, 30-yard line for the Irish. Ball is ridden off. Up the middle goes Terrence Howard. And he pounds in there for six yards. Here's Todd with a report on Julius Jones. Well, Keith, I think we'll see a lot more running by committee from Notre Dame. Julius Jones keeps being hampered by ankles and Achilles, and they keep coming out and taping it more and more. The problem is they aren't removing the old tape. They keep putting more tape on top of it. So he's got about a mile of athletic tape around both ankles right now, but it's still not giving him the support and the mobility he needs. We'll see what happens. Keith? Well, his teammates are trying to get a little cushion here at the Stanford 25-yard line on second down and a short five. That's nowhere near five yards. It's four yards. They've gotten away from the option now. They're running reverses. They're running throwbacks to the quarterback. They've got the one-back scheme. It's working better, too. Here's the option. the option. Holiday keeps it. Takes a pretty good lick, too, from Matt Leonard. Number 99. Matt put 290 pounds on him. Matt Leonard had an injured back, comes in as a down lineman. Here's Tank Williams right here. Tank Williams is your, your strong safety, or your free safety, rather. But look at him. He's got quarterback responsibilities. He's got him, makes him cut back in, and that's where Leonard comes with a pursuit. Force him back inside, and you're doing your job. Third down and four. It's not five, it's four. And the scoreboard keeps insisting it's five, but it's not. What I like is an argument with the scoreboard. <laughs> this is Terrence Howard. And I think he's going to have a first down. The linesmen are coming in from both sides of the field, and they're marking him good. Hank Williams in to make the hit, but it came too late, I think. 
Terrence Howard, young guy or a senior, but he had nine carries, 35 yards against Boston College. Here's Tank Williams again, reads the play, comes up and engages, but by that point, he's down by the first down marker. Official timeout for a measurement. Young senior. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, Thanksgiving. <laughs> Cryptothane. <laughs> Just the nose of the ball. <laughs> They're grinding it out here, and they've got a first down. Just short of the 20-yard line on the Stanford side with 9.50 to go in the third quarter. Notre Dame coming west at 4-5, and five, trying to steal one at Stanford. Go home even, and Purdue next week up at West Lafayette. And the Boilers got beat today by the Hoosiers. The old Washington bucket is back in Bloomington. Holiday gives it away to Howard. Howard uh, stumbles over somebody's leg, and then he is taken down by Anthony Gabriel and company. Keith, again, this is where Notre Dame has really struggled all year. You get down in the red zone, they move the ball effectively until they get there, but then they come away with no points a lot of times. And they've uh, scored touchdowns less than half the time in the red zone, and that's not that's not very efficient down there. Why is it? Why? Why? Uh, last time I thought it was their play calling. They've got to get more creative down here. Here they come out with a power eye or the straight eye. The old Tom Nugent eye back. Well, you, you can always run slants, can't you? Goes to the outside and overthrows him by three or four yards. Tom Lipinski coming out of the backfield. And so I tried to get Carlisle to stand up, and Carlisle said, leave me alone. I want a nap. I took a pretty good lick. Well, he hadn't thrown the ball very well all day, so he throws a pass here that's, that's way high, and then he just gets tagged by Gabriel, 52. Felt every bit of that, but he's one for eight. That one was a touchdown, but... The other seven weren't even close. Third down and ten now for Notre Dame. Field goal is a skirmish win for Stanford. Blitz is coming. Little shovel pass forward and it's incomplete. <laughs> and it'll be fourth down. Fourth and ten with the ball just outside the 20-yard line. You know, that's when you know you're having a bad night when you overthrow the shuffle pass. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Setta is on to the field. Here's the play. Good safe play because it is an incompletion, as you mentioned. Now this kid has a strong, strong leg. Adam Tibble is the holder. John Crowder, the snapper, and here's the kick. It's good. Deep in the end zone, fumbled, and now he's got to run with it. Kenneth Cohen handled the ball very poorly, couldn't make up his mind what to do, and he's going to give up the ball down on about the inside the three-yard line. So uh, that's not a very good play by the Stanford Cardinal. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought five yard line. Turn and give the ball to Brian Allen, and he'll wedge it out to about the 10 yard line, picking up four yards on the play. Well, he, he looks like he takes his eye off of it just for a second, lets the ball get into his chest plate on his shoulder pads. That comes down. Then he doesn't know whether to stay in or come out. The confusion makes him hesitate for a second, and then good coverage by Notre Dame. And so now the Irish have Stanford backed up again. Controlling the line of scrimmage. Fasani remains at quarterback for the Cardinal. They try to run the ball in, in the, the big guy territory, and there's no room inside as he goes up to about the 12-yard line. Pacific Life game summary will immediately point to the turnovers by Stanford. Bad handoff by Fasani, a slip by the fullback. Notre Dame gets it. That led to points. Then this ball shouldn't have been thrown because they had great coverage out there by 34 Duff. Using that sideline, taking him inside out, makes the interception. That turned to points. 
Once again, we've got a football team that may be running out of feet before they run out of shells. As Fasani is back, throws the ball under pressure, and he throws it into no man's land, and it's incomplete. Keith, what we have here is a Stanford team that averages 39 points a game with just three on the board tonight. Well, they're just getting hammered. Randy Fasani sat out four games with an injury. Comes in here tonight on senior night. He's not in sync. He's not throwing the ball that well, and he is being pressured. So the offensive line has to take part of the blame. But I guarantee you the folks from Stanford that are sitting in the stands tonight are starting to think, where is Chris Lewis? Eric Johnson will stand in his end zone and then punt right about the goal line. Montez Duck is standing back near midfield. Stanford's had a couple of these blocked this year. It's a low line drive. It's returnable. There's nobody down there. He's got a lot of room to work now as he starts. Oh, look at this. He ran right into the tackle. Coming downfield on the coverage for Stanford. Terrence Howard is the tailback. Julius Jones dinged up again. Here's your option. Carlisle Holiday keeps it, turns up field, and he's close to a first down. He's going to have about nine yards on that carry. Ryan Fernandez, a little cornerback, made the tackle. Tank Williams, one of the best safeties around, but they come inside of him. He's got quarterback responsibility and to force him back in, but he can't give him that much ground. If he's going to force him back in, he's got to be there and close the gap on him and make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Holiday's shaken up on the play. They've got a reaching down to his leg. I don't know if it's... Well, it's the first winter storm of the year. Hit this, part of the this is a doozy. And they run the ball with Terrence Howard, and Howard comes in there for very little. He had a second and one, uh, one and a half, for his first down, and uh, he's close, but I don't think he got it. Keith, now you're not only getting rain that is just really pelting the field and coming down sideways, but you're getting a very strong wind. Into the yard, third down and one on the Stanford 47. This is the kind of a night that makes you dream of the hearth, the fire, and a dog on your feet. Right in the middle again, pounding at it. Matt Lavecchio on a quarterback sneak gets the first down as he's down to the 44-yard line. Keith, Notre Dame is going right into the wind, so you know that the offensive coordinator, Kevin Rogers, and head coach Bob Davey are thinking about that. With Lavecchio a passer, he would have to be passing right smack into the teeth of the wind. I'm remaining in third quarter now at running at 535. And these wipers on uh, the binoculars. Ball is handed off again to Howard. They're not going to mess around with it. They're just going to hand the thing away and keep it on the ground and keep pounding at Stanford and run as much clock as they can. And let's go back to Todd before he drowns. Well, here's the story. You've got Carla Holda. I just talked to the trainer. He doesn't have just one cramp in his calf. He's got both calves that are cramping up right now and they're rubbing them they're trying to get them worked out and so far no luck and as Timmy pointed out they are excruciating he's got them times two wow Tim never had cramps he was always a great thing <laughs> never played long enough to get him Malavecchio's pass good one but good defense by Fernandez and he spoils it and it falls away incomplete. Next Saturday night, you'll see the top two teams of the Big 12, and they happen to be, if you've been away, you'll be surprised. Colorado and Texas, they battle it out for the Big 12 championship, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 title championship, next Saturday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. They played once already this year, and Texas won the ball game 41 to 7, but I'll guarantee you, they didn't beat the Colorado team that I saw yesterday. Well, you've got that right. That was some kind of shocker yesterday. 62 points against Nebraska. They probably could have beaten anybody in the country. Little shovel pass, almost intercepted by Stanford. Almost intercepted. The ball was deflected by Eamon Gordon and then almost caught by big old Matt Leonard. Defensive tackle. Keith, we talked about a swing when Holiday went out and Lavecchio came out. Nothing against Matt at quarterback. 
But the situation is this. Stanford just made their best stop of the game defensively, and you can just feel the game starting to switch momentum-wise. And here comes Luke Powell going deep now and along the front. Stanford trying to get a little heat on the Irish putter, Joey Hillbowl. Hillbowl has had a big night. He's had a 50-yarder and a 46-yarder, and the kick is away into the Howland rain. And it takes a Notre Dame bounce and is going to roll down around the 12. And 10, the ball is on the 12-yard line. Stanford ball, and Brian Allen is the deep man. Allen can't get out of the backfield. He's going to be pinned down and dropped inside the 10, back around the 7-yard line by Anthony Weaver. Now let's spend a moment with John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Keith, on the Burger King update, Miami keeps piling it on. This is fourth and goal. Najee Davenport gets in for the touchdown. So it's a 44 to nothing game. But Washington finally gets into the end zone. Rich Alexis for the touchdown, 44-7. That's your Burger King update. Keith, back to you. John, are you dry? <laughs> Good to hear he's finally getting his voice back. <laughs> Seven yard line for Sonny out of the end zone now. Wants to throw, but a hurry gets it away. Up the middle, oh, he's caught at the 25 yard line by guess who? Tao Johnson. First down, Cardinal. Boy, Tao jumps up and signals first down, but Ron Israel just tagged him. Big time play by Fasani. Here's your receiver right there in the middle. And as Keith said, he's 6'7", 245. And this is a strike. But watch the hit he takes once he makes the reception coming from behind. And his head was jolted back viciously. This is Ron Israel, number five, who comes from behind and makes that hit. But Teo Johnson, okay, jumps up and says, first down. And they'll run it with Poland. Kenneth Poland, and he isn't going anywhere. He's short of the line of scrimmage. So he's going to lose a yard or so. teo has been pretty quiet tonight. Surprised they haven't gone to him more. It's quiet tonight. He's only got two catches, 42 yards. He had nine catches in the first four games. Started to catch on to the offense, and they started going to him more. He's had 26 receptions in the last five games. Remember the Canadian Junior Olympic basketball team. Older brother, heck of a linebacker. This time they find some daylight in the middle, and it's a big run for Kenneth Tolan, the sophomore who suddenly surfaced in the first quarter with a 52-yard sprint that led to Stanford's field goal. That's all they've had, one field goal. Keith Holliday got hurt, Lavecchio came in. The rain started to go, the defense got a stop. We said it was a momentum swing, and now you can really feel it. Boy, that was just the, the front offensive line just opening up a huge hole for him. And you really can feel Stanford now starting to play Stanford football. Heitman, Quacha, Schindler, the three big seniors in the middle of the line. The ball is on the 48-yard line with the first down. Quickly thrown for uh, Teo Johnson. He had gone off for a play, comes back in, and that was a poorly thrown ball. Never had a chance to catch it. Stanford has the most talented and experienced line in the Pac-10 and certainly one of the most experienced in the country. You look at the number of starts on this offensive line, and then you go right to Heitman. Eric Heitman, who was just named this past week as an All-American, is just the leader on that offensive line, which is some kind of powerful. And he plays some powerful piano. We're going to show that to you before this game is over, so help me. Second down and 10. Definitely the toughest offensive line Notre Dame has faced this year. Colin. Goes in motion, becomes a receiver. Fasani runs the other way. And now he's got to throw quickly, and he does, and it's incomplete. He, looking to the right side, he had two men going to the left and two going to the right and couldn't find anybody. Do you know what? The best thing about Fasani is some of his best passes are incompletions. In other words, he's not getting them picked off. He came into this game, 12 touchdowns, only two picks all year. He makes good decisions. Here he buys his time, he looks, and then he knows, hey, I've got, the, I've got Powell there, and if Powell makes the catch, fine. If he doesn't, he's on the sideline. We've got an incompletion. And you could see him cruising the field. He looks at what's available. He really does. Well, you're right, and, and that's, that's rare in Newark, Delaware. Wayne comes in 6'7", and about 300 pounds. He was born in Jamaica, but came to this country when he was two years old. Big third down play here, though, for Fasano. Third and 10 in a 13-3 ball game with 2.09 to go in the third quarter. 
coming with the blitz. Runs away from it. Holding penalty flags all over the place. The signer's going to run downfield and pick up a good, a good gain on it, but it's going to go away. There are two flags waiting back upfield. There. Here it comes. They run a stunt. Here comes the tackle. Takedown. Yeah, it really was. And right in front of the referee. Ball comes back to the 38-yard line, where it's third down and 20. He's got Johnson deep. No time to throw it to him in a second. Dogged pursuit by, Ter by Harrison, the linebacker for Notre Dame. Terrio Harrison just kept pursuing him and finally got him. Bringing a lot of pressure from every direction. They overload on the left. They come them on the right, bring them on the right. And then watch the pursuit by 51 Harrison. Just kind of stays with it, stays with it. Now here he comes, tracks him down from behind and makes the big play. Harrison, second sack of the year, 232 pounder, fourth sack by Notre Dame tonight. He had a shot. He had Johnson available for some time, but he never could quite get himself set when he saw it to get it to it. So they got a punt. Eric Johnson, two, four, six, punt of the night. Pressure coming, got it out. Not a bad punt. Fielded back at the 31 yard line by Duff. That's still going. And that's a very good return and outstanding. To take out of your offensive lineup. Howard's in there, tailback right now. The single back offense has worked very well for him in the second half. Here's Carlisle Holiday rolling out and throwing. No. Intended for Gary Gutsy. Tied in. First time he's seen the ball tonight. Notre Dame has run the ball so effectively today, but the passing game has just been non-existent. He's now one for 10, 47 yards. And that one, as we said, was a touchdown, but still the others, all those passes seem to be high and outside. Second and ten. No pressure. Pulls it down. Now he throws it this way, and it goes to the cheap seats. Couldn't make up his mind. I mean, he really didn't give himself the time to set to make a decision that time. He just kept happy feeting it around and uh, finally threw it away. Tank Williams following Gary Gotze all the way down. I think he was the original intended receiver they had to come off him and then go to the secondary receivers and just threw it away but good play by tank williams for safety on third down and ten they'll go to a shotgun take four right out Hanford does not put much pressure on him. they don't this time balls away to the sidelines and it is incomplete again high and outside javen hunter and the ball is four feet over his head now one for 12. My goodness. It's hard to imagine you can be winning a football game and your quarterback is one for 12 in passing. Bob Davy with a little sarcastic smile. He knows that he's put his team in good positions today to be successful and they just haven't executed with the passing game. Neither has Stanford. Here's the punt. Luke Powell running up on it. It's a short kick and he goes straight sideways and throws dead at the 22 yard Getting back at their own 22 yard line. Pasani's pass going quickly there. Just snap. It goes to Tao Johnson, and Johnson's up to the 40 yard line. Man coverage. They were pressing at the line of scrimmage. Again, we tell you, Johnson, six foot seven, just runs the slant, gets position. Good release off the line. The ball's waiting for him, and that's where Pasani really excels. Boy, he puts that ball right there on time. I'm not sure Notre Dame can stop that play if they just keep working it from one side to the other. Well, the cornerbacks have done a pretty good job pressing that man-to-man -man defense. That time they were beaten. Johnson out. Well, Jim. 
No room to run for Poland. He's going to have a couple of yards. Talk about the success this Notre Dame defense has had tonight. All you have to do is go to Stanford's possessions and find out what they've done tonight. This is their 10th possession. They've had nine already. They had six punts, two turnovers, and the field goal was in their very first time they had the football. So it's been a very non-productive night for the Cardinals. The Notre Dame um, touchdown came on a, a very simple pass play, too, that broke open down the middle when uh, Stanford blitzed their safeties. Right, left the middle wide open for it. Second down and seven. Sonic getting some heat. Now he's got a problem. Now he works it out, all right, and runs for the marker, and he is close to the marker, and may even have a first down. Uh, see where they finally put a foot down on him. He's going to be about four yards short, I believe. Yeah, he's back there around the 46-yard line. Time permitting, thrifty Carmel post-game report, scores and highlights from across the country. So it'll be third down and four. You start tiptoe on the sidelines and you just never know. And he wasn't lucky. Can't believe that moon after we had all that rain. Those cells, the rain cells are coming through here and then the sky clears. Had a rainbow earlier, had sun half a dozen times today, but in between, boy, it's been wet. Sasani again quickly. Ball is thrown a little bit behind uh, Teo Johnson and he couldn't come up with it. He was wide open. He was alone. All behind you is a hard thing to catch when you're going full speed. You're not kidding about that. Ryan Wells has to be really frustrated. He came into the game with uh, almost 30 receptions, and they haven't even looked his way tonight. Yeah, he looks cranky. I was going to say, you can almost see it in his face, can't you? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Frustrated. Eric Johnson is punting. Montez Duff is waiting. He's had a pretty good night returning kick. Just very high. And a fair catch is called back at the. Have to go in the ball game. 13 to 3, Notre Dame. Handling the Stanford Cardinal all right and backed up right now inside their 20 yard line at the 19. We have on the telephone with us the head coach of the Oregon Ducks, Mike Bellotti, who's been off for 21 days and is about to get cranked up and prepare for the Oregon State Beavers to close their season on December 1 next Saturday. Right now, Notre Dame handling the ball and, and handling the game. And Carlisle Holiday is back in. Tries to run the option, can't do it. Coilwire comes up and takes him down for a loss of about three yards. You, Mike, what have you been doing? You've been taking time, getting the legs fresh and resting? Yeah, we really have. We've been off since uh, we practiced on Tuesday, practiced about five times in the last couple weeks, but kids have been off for four or five days. We start again on Monday. Washington is losing 51-7 to Miami tonight, but Colorado and Oklahoma and uh, They've been the big story with Colorado crushing Nebraska, and Oklahoma losing today, Michigan getting beat today. That BCS landscape is changing, Mike. It is certainly changing. It's been very interesting the past 24 hours, and I've got a chance to watch most of those games. So, you know, it, it's a little difficult, though, to sit around and watch other people determine your fate. We're ready to get back on the field. Notre Dame right now has Carlisle Holiday on an option, takes the ball, and just takes off with it. All they want to do is eat the clock, and they're coming up on 12 minutes to play. How about all your dinged up people? Is everybody healthy now? They absolutely are. The nice thing about this, you know, having two weeks off has given us a chance to really get healthy. We, we face that tough battle though of keeping them competitively sharp while also giving them a chance to rest up and get fresh legs. That Oregon State route of Washington got your attention, huh? Well, it did. You know, Oregon State has been a team typically that's got better at the end of the year. They certainly have this year. That the win over Washington was was huge and they really dominated the game. Mike, with your kids are watching everything that's taking place this weekend as well and not having to play, is it difficult keeping them focused on the Pac-10 title having to play Oregon State? No, you know, I really don't think so. I'll tell you what, despite all the other things that are going on, the Civil War is the very most important thing in defeating Oregon State simply because of the right to live in this state and hold your head up high. So all the rest of it uh, doesn't matter if we don't take care of business. Well, and the other thing, too, with some of these losses, obviously the Heisman picture has changed, and, and your guy's right there now probably the front runner. 
Well, I, I think Joey Harrington, as I said all along, he's going to be determined on the field, and I think he's done a great job this year for us. I mean, his stats speak very well, but just what he's accomplished over the course of his career and this year and leading us to victory and being the kind of kid that he is, it's, it's fun to have him around. Well, you're in a sort of a win-win situation that uh, if you don't get the chance for the national championship game, certainly you're going to go to a great bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, and play a worthy opponent. So, Mike, good luck to you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing you, too. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Okay. We've got a fumble down on the field on the punt return, and uh, Notre Dame is... Big mess at the top of the pack. Well, Stanford would be, be one of the co-champions. Four. Four co-champions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of which Stanford would be one, but this is going to really... Oregon, work. however, holds all the tiebreakers. So they're going to go to the Fiesta Bowl. Well, how about this, though? Wells makes a big return. It looks like uh, Stanford's got things going their way. The momentum's changed, and then he fumbles it. That's the third turnover tonight. Rocky Boyman looks like the man that got around it. This is what we were just talking about. Pac-10 standings. Oregon firmly entrenched at the top. Yeah, if they win... Uh, uh, against the Beavers, then they're the champions. They go to the Fiesta Bowl. Unless, of course, still not out of the Rose Bowl. Nope, they're not. First down from the 31 yard line for the Irish as Sanford now beginning to run out of time and. Dick and John, he's got a microphone in front of his face with a, a word processor in his lap telling him how to do his job. The ball is uh, on the 25 yard line. Terrence Howard carrying it. Uh, looking at these two coaches, their their records have been very similar, up and down, up and down. Uh, he, uh, Bob Davy talked about yesterday in conversation. We've won nine games in two of the last four seasons. I think the challenge at a place like Notre Dame, the challenge at a place like Stanford, is to maintain it year in and year out, playing the kind of schedule we choose to play at Notre Dame. Well, they started off pretty tough this year. Going to Nebraska, going to Texas a and and then playing Michigan State, and lost all three. Holiday's pass is thrown over the head of uh, Javen Hunter. Oh, Javen, he's seen about five of those go sailing over his head tonight. Had almost no chance to catch any of them. High and outside again. You know, just to, to, to wrap this up, what we've been talking about, Bob Davey, and of course the decision will be made by Kevin White, the athletic director, but the last time Kevin White faced a college football head coaching change was when he was down at Tulane, and uh, he hired Greg Davis, or dismissed Greg Davis, rather, and hired Buddy Tevens. This is going to be a bigger one here, though. When you make a change at Notre Dame, that's a career maker. Especially after you just oh, the contract uh, to 2005. Exactly. A lot of money tied up in it. You bet. Third down and 15. Holiday flush. He might get it. He's got, He's quick, got it. He? Yes, he does. He just pulled it down and took off, and Corey Wire finally tracked him down, but he had a lot of green grass in front of him, which is why he pulled it down and took off. Well, you cheat your safety up, and when he gets blocked, here's your safety right here, Tank Williams. When he gets blocked, it seems to open things up. Comes across the line of scrimmage, ride him out, let his own momentum take him out of the play, come in under him. Holiday explodes, gets through the hole, and takes it out the midfield. We told you earlier that uh, Carlisle Holiday is uh, has the second most rushing yards for a quarterback in a season. Tony Rice is the only man who's ever run for more, and Rice uh, ran for 884 back in 1984. Ball goes to Terrence Howard, a couple of yards on that carry. Counter trade brought Curtin and Man of Fane, got them all out in front of the ball carry, still couldn't move the defense. Two hundred twenty three yards rushing average and almost six a carry and then you look at the passing game they shut it down completely one for fourteen for holiday and of course what was Lavecchio Lavecchio was uh, 0 for two. Well there have been people available in the passing game it's just the quarterback has not delivered it. Second down and nine all just over on the Stanford side of the field. Holiday keeping coming down on the option turns inside picks up a couple. But what he's doing is he's grinding the clock nine and a half minutes to play in a ball game and the Irish lead by ten. Well good point there partner he's shortening the game. And Stanford needs two scores.
Third and seven. He's in the shotgun. Little shovel pass forward, the ball rolling around, and incomplete forward pass. Well, he's throwing it in there where there's a lot of hands grabbing. He's going to lose one of those yet. And he's throwing it in hard. He's 0 for 2 now on the little shuffle pass and 1 for 15 overall. You ought to have a phone call with the Cupper. Who's Cupper's right across the bay here. Tom <laughs> Davey laughs, laughing sarcastically going, can you believe this? <laughs> it's fourth down and seven. Eighth punt of the night. For Joey Hill Bowl. Some long, some short. All effective like that, though. That's very high, and it's going to fair uh, force a fair catch call. Their own 19 yard line. They've got eight minutes and 46 seconds. They're down 10 points, and the ball is thrown quickly on the bounce. Saying, what the heck is going on tonight? I don't think Stanford expected this at all. They were very confident when we talked with them this week. They really felt like they could handle Notre Dame. Uh -uh. Notre Dame's still alive for a bowl. They've got to win out, but they can become bowl eligible. That goes to Sonny. He's looking around. Now he's chased out of the pocket, almost falls down, throws it poorly, and it's off the shoulder pads of Ryan Wells. Now we go to John Sonny. John, what's shaking? Well, Keith, with a 51 to 7 lead, would you be going for it on fourth and goal? Well, Larry Coker in Miami does at the two. Frank Gore with a touchdown. Miami opens up the lead to 58 to 7. That's the second touchdown they scored on fourth and goal. Keith. They're just showing off. No, there's some history there. I mean, Washington took him out of the national championship hunt. You heard all the Miami players talking this week about Washington being cheap shot artists and hitting them late. There's some history there, so they're trying to run that thing up on it. What goes around comes around. Well, you got that right. Hassani having a problem. Now he's got a man to beat all by himself and finally delivers it. And it's all the way down to the 35-yard line. It's Nick Sebus. Nick Sebus, a sophomore from Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. That's only his sixth reception of the year. He's a sophomore. But this... This is just because he didn't quit on the play. Fasani gets chased out of the pocket. The DBs now think he's going to run. They cheat a little bit, and see if he finds his way behind him. He just didn't quit when the pressure chased Fasani out. Eight minutes and 20 seconds to go. 46 yards on that pass play. First down, Stanford. Notre Dame, 35-yard line. Jump ball. Flag. Teo Johnson under the ball, knocked out of bounds, tripped in the penalty against the Irish. Boy, I tell you what, Teo Johnson got away with one earlier. It's going to be interesting to see who this is called on, whether it's Jefferson or Johnson. Jefferson trying to handle him at 5-9 against 6-7. The way the flag was throng, it looked to me like it was going to be against the defense. Yep, it's against Jefferson. Jefferson had it pinned against the sideline. Big, big height differential. Pass interference on a defense, 15 yards previous spot. Automatic first down. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But as you say, moot point. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I tell you what, that's the it, 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 the pass interference rule in college football. Something's got to be done about it because, uh, I mean, it's called so many different ways. We see it differently every week. It's a very tough call. Well, it certainly favors the offense. There's no question about it. It's first and ten. Ball on the 20-yard line of Notre Dame. And you got that same match over there. Uh, Johnson against Jefferson. And Fasani's looking at it and going for him. And they two-time him. Rolling over from the safety position to help out was Donald Dykes. And they knocked the ball loose. Yeah, and I don't think Fasani accounted for Dykes, the safety. Dykes was just sitting back playing free, and he reads him right away. He oh, looks over holding. there at the, Now, that was pass interference <laughs> right there. That stretch defensive holding. <laughs> well, they call the other one, and this time he stretches his shirt. <laughs> and he gets away with it. Well. 
can't see everything. Pontiac drives Summerlin here, four plays, 61 yards, 44 seconds. They're trying to hustle into the end zone at eight minutes to go in the ball game. Cassandra looking around, puts it up for Wells and overthrows him. Ryan Wells finally getting to see the ball here in the fourth quarter, but not being able to get a ball he can catch. Shane Walton defending on the play. Well, Keith, that's going to bring up third and ten. You're down in the red zone, and again, you've got to go with uh, Johnson. He, there's such a size differential there with Johnson at 6'7 and Jefferson 5'9 that you've got to take your shot there. Well, you know they're going to roll over and help him, so why don't you just take Johnson down the middle? Well, they got him singled up, and you know your safety's going to help. Know that. There he is. Pressure's coming. They flush him. Now he's got to run, and he's going to get his first down. Oh, he's very close to it. It looks to me like he's inside the 10, and if he is, he'll have his first down. Yeah, they'll mark it at the 9. They'll move the chains if Fasani did it himself. Justin Smith finally brought him down. He's a tough kid, isn't he? Yep. Randy Fasani playing with a flat tire, bad wheel, sat out four games, comes back here Sunday on uh, senior night, got that big knee brace on, tucks it away and says, I'll get a first down. Down to the nine. Now you got Johnson on this side with Wells. That's five right there, Johnson. Sonny stays on the center. Ball is handed off on the run, and it is Seymour gets the carry and sticks it in the end zone, and the train is leaving the station. Talked about that offensive line, how experienced they are, how many starts they've had. It averages 305 pounds, three seniors on them. Watch the red jersey slant down zone block, carry the white jerseys out of there, and look at the hole it produced. Wow. Vizelli for the point. Johnson, the punter, does the holding, snaps good, holds up, and a low line drive just gets in there. Whoa, -ho, that was close, but it goes through, and it's a 13 to 10 ball game with 7:22 to play. What would you do if someone passed you the keys to a Pontiac Grand Prix for a week? Sports Thanksgiving College Football Feast, presented by Siemens. There's Casey sitting on the bench, getting a drink of water and a breath of air as he has just put Stanford back into this ball game at 7.22 to go. And the Cardinal kicks off to the Irish. Notre Dame takes the ball with David Gibbons carrying at the 10 yard line and David's up to the 30. There the Irish will start and a moment with Todd Harris. Well, Keith, what a difference a touchdown makes during that last time change. Coach Bob Davey was on the sideline working his players. They all had their heads down. He said, it's time to have mental toughness. We've stopped him before. We need to do it again. Offensive lines coach was telling him, do not play like you just have a three-point lead. Do not play not to lose. And on the other side of the field, Stanford was exuberating, and they were talking about, this is our time. Let's take it over. I think you just created a new word. <laughs> But well, you know, Notre Dame's moved the ball fairly well up and down the field. It's been in the red zone where they've stumbled. First down from the 30-yard line. And Lebecchio is in there at quarterback in relief for Carlisle Holiday. And the ball moves out near the 40-yard line with Terrence Howard, the tailback. So Matt Lebecchio, who came on a little while ago when uh, Holiday had the leg cramps, is back in there at 7.06 to play. And he just moved the chains right there with 10 yards as he handed away to Terrence Howard. Just two for 18 passing. You know, Terrence Howard's that guy who they had great promise for. Then he had that fumble against Nebraska early in the season, seemed to set the tone, and they lost some confidence in him. But he can play. Ball is handed away this time to Tom Lipinski, the fullback, and he's in there for three yards. Le uh, Lavecchio looks kind of funny out there. He's wearing clean britches and a clean shirt. Everybody else had been rolling around <laughs> in the mud and the blood, and it's a mess. Been raining for 24 hours off and on, and we've been dry now for about 20 minutes. We told you about Lavecchio, 7-1 and one as a starter last year, but this year just one touchdown, three interceptions. <laughs> the 
There goes Jeff Fain snapping the ball at center out of the shotgun. Ball goes back to Lavecchio. It's handed away to Terrence Howard again. Howard's a 6'1", 195-pound senior, and he's proving tonight that he's durable. He's near the 45-yard line. It'll bring up third down and five. And you would think that's a passing down, but again, we tell you about the 1 for 15 for Holiday and the 0 for 2 for Lavecchio. Just have not been able to get it done passing the football. Well, Pinsky now checks in for Notre Dame. Third and five. <laughs> Lavecchio to throw it, gets his ball away, and it is incomplete. Thrown behind the intended receiver. Tom Lipinski looked like the fullback out of the backfield, and he was well covered by Coy Wire anyway, and so the Irish are going to punt now. The pick ball up looked one like first down, and then they can't do anything more. Oh, it looked like it hit the back of the helmet it of Coy Wire. Yeah. I think it might have. Right in the back of the head. 13 to 10. A lot of time left. Boy, isn't that the truth? Stanford's starting to feel it a little bit. Powell waiting. Punts away. It's up the elevator shaft this time. And takes a Stanford bounce coming back up the field and will be marked at about the 40 yard line. That's a 15 yard punt. Now he's hit a 50 yarder tonight, a 46, all kinds of distance. But this one, when they really needed a big, was only 15. Take a look at the Pacific Life game summary, and you can see the story so far has been turnovers by Stanford down here. That that really was critical and kept Stanford behind the eight ball most of the game. 241 yards rushing for Notre Dame, passing 64 yards, but 47 of those came on one pass for the touchdown. They've been sacked four times, and Fasani now eight for 23, 159 yards. They get the ball back. It's first down at the 41-yard line with five minutes and 17 seconds to play in the game, and they run it with Colin, and he's got daylight, and he's got a first down. He's on the Notre Dame side of the field at the 48-yard line, and you kind of get a drift from afar because we're a long way from the field in this particular stadium, but uh, momentum may be putting on a red shirt. There is no question about it. Stanford players now walking around with a bounce in their step. Fazzani gets them out in and out of the huddle. You can tell that they've changed a little bit. And you better look for this guy right here. There's Johnson. He's been your guy, your hot ticket. Maybe wearing Notre Dame down a little bit, too. They haven't substituted all that much in, uh, in the trenches. And there's been some tough thumping going on in there tonight like that. And again, it's just power football. And it's another first down for the Stanford Cardinal. So that big offensive line for the Cardinal now asserting itself and uh, they're moving things. They'll measure. Talking to the Notre Dame coaches, they say big plays have hurt them all year. They've been able to stop people and then all of a sudden they'll give up a big play. But right now, Stanford, as you said, using that big offensive line, just chunks at a time, just taking this thing. It's not big plays. They're just wearing them down, moving them hard. Tyrone Willingham still wearing the hood. As it gets a little cooler, and that's close, and it is a first down. So they've run twice, and successive first downs have come from it. It's a talented Stanford team. Remember, they beat Oregon back in October, defeated number four UCLA October 27. That's when Stanford got the attention of the nation. Brian Allen has not played since the third quarter, and uh, Kenny uh, Kerry Carter, the big back, is out for the season with an injury. They were down 42-28 to uh, Oregon and going into the fourth quarter and won the ball game. They stay with the ground game that has been productive and uh, Tolan, who has been running hard, uh, uh, picks up two yards to get it down to about the 37-yard line. One of the remarkable comebacks of the season occurred at Eugene, Oregon. We were there when 42-28, uh, all of a sudden, Stanford blocks an Oregon punt, cashes it in. They block another Oregon punt and cash it in. Then they get an interception. And then they had uh, the onside kick. And so as a result, they wind up winning the ball game 49-42. Fasani is going to be chased. He's got a little room. He takes off to the sidelines, and they finally get him inside the 20. Take him down at the 18-yard line, and he's dragged down by number 34, Vontez Duff. 
Dale Johnson got a good block to get him up there. And Stanford now is pounding the ball down the field. Teo Johnson got a terrific block. His right, number five. He sees the run now, turns and, and just cuts everybody off. And Fasani with that big knee brace, still picking up yardage, gutting things out. Irish getting caught here, but Stanford not able to get the ball off. They just stand there and wait for Notre Dame to get the defensive people in position. They to come up and pop that snap real quickly. They might have picked up some three yarders. Fasani falling down, hands the ball away to Tolan. One of the offensive linemen may have stepped back a little bit to affect his block and as a result got tangled up with Fasani. So they were playing fast fastball there for a little bit. Now they'll slow it down at 318 to play in a game and they're within Basile's range here. Baselli has hit a 29 yarder for the first point of the night. And the last time we played here two years ago he hit uh, like a 22 yard field goal on the last play of the game to win 40 to 37. But he can't win it now. He can just tie it. He has a chance. They stay with the run. This is Tolan going around the corner and down to about the 20 yard line and that's a pick up of three yards. So that'll bring up third down and long. Third and 13 roughly. Ball of the 21 and it's sprinkling rain again. Still haven't thrown to Wells. Oh, they have, but he hasn't had a chance to catch. It. Has not made a catch. Powell, Powell's been very quiet with one catch. Johnson's been the guy with three catches for 60 yards. Seabees had one big one. Got him down there and got him going for the touchdown. Fasani's pass under it. It's Johnson. He can't pull it though. Penalty flags. I mean, he was mugged. Well, Clifford he's Jefferson just can't handle him. I mean, Clifford is only 5'9", for heaven's sakes, and Taylor Johnson is 6'7". Yeah, but if you watch his coverage, Jefferson does a pretty good job. He's got him inside out. Look at the difference in height. He, but he gets caught behind him, and now he can't get to the ball. And when he reaches over, his arms aren't long enough. Had to fight through him. You want to stay to the side of him or in front of him, but, I mean, that's... Looks like oh, Button uh, Jeff. Oh, Clifford's like a terrier. Boy, he's going to get him one way or the other. Well, he did the right thing. He fouled him. It's 15 yards. It's not a, not a touchdown. And rather than give the touchdown, you take that pass and appearance you call. You're absolutely 100% correct. Defense 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. See, that's the dinger right there. Automatic first down. Well, with that 15 yards, he would have made it anyway. They needed 13. They get 15 on the penalty. That puts him down on the six-yard line. First and goal. Two minutes and two seconds to play. We've got another one of them going here, don't we? We sure do. The home team has won, I guess, over the last uh, five years. The home team has won the game. Last six years. Kenneth Tolan remains the deep back for Stanford. He's got the ball running in the middle, squeezing his way down to about the two yard line. Pick it up half the distance, and uh, the Irish defense is getting very tired now. They're getting up slowly. Anthony Weaver wobbling as he goes back to the huddle. He's played a terrific ball game. This is when that big offensive line just seems to take over Chambers, Heitman, Boisha, Schindler, Harris. Ball is on the two, second down and goal. Casey Moore has one touchdown tonight. He may get one, a chance right here. Nope, they get it back to Tolan, and he fights his way. Still going, still going, and goes down. Short of the goal line, but not by much. You know, Keith, he was hit at about the four. Yes, he was. And just continued to pump those legs like pistons. Looked like a whirling dervish down by the goal line. I watch when he gets hit right away. Gets hit at the four, breaks that tackle, now watch him continue to push down by the goal line. Great effort by Tolan. Anthony Weaver is exhausted. Timeout. The quarterback is 6'4", 230. So all you need is a quarterback sneak down here. Yeah, he's got a sore leg. Tolan. 
running for the corner. He's in there. He had the uh, fresh legs and he took it into the end zone. Got a block from Casey Moore and he gives Stanford the lead for the second time. Stanford scored early on the first possession three to nothing. It was Notre Dame came back to go 13 to three. Now Stanford has come back in the fourth quarter. It's raining hard again and they lead 16 13 and going for the point. This point is very big. If he makes it, it's a four point lead. Stanford Cardinals 17 to 13 with a minute and eight seconds to play in the ball game, trying to win nine games in a season for only the second time in 50 years. They have San Jose State left to play. Notre Dame will play Purdue next week. Surprising call on the goal line. You're at the one. You got one of the most powerful lines there is. Block off, seal off, seal off like that, and get him outside in the corner. Nobody's expecting that. They're expecting tackle to tackle. A look at him, seal off the corner. You get your fullback out in front of you, and you just run to the pylon. Got that big offensive line. They think you're coming inside. You just. What? It's Duff who's had some good return. He's the man they want to have the ball. And it's going right to him at the five yard line. Here comes Duff. Looking for a crack. Brings the ball back to the 28 yard line where Tank Williams makes the tackle. And let's check in for a moment with John Saunders. He's another fourth down, but as Terry Bowden points out, you'd rather let the defense have a chance to stop you than kick the field goal and run and score up. Derek Crude up 13 yards to Jason Gethers. It is a touchdown, so it's now a 65 to 7 lead, but that Rose may be a little bit early to pull out. Obviously, somebody from the stands threw that down. Leave it on the ground, I would think, Keith. Yeah, I would too, John. That's. Yeah, things are fractious these days. <laughs> you don't know from Saturday to Saturday. And it is uh, David Gibbons, uh, the player who is injured on the field for the Irish. He's going to walk off. David Gibbons, a senior from Humble, Texas, has played a lot of good football during his days in South Bend or in Stan at uh, Notre Dame. Sure has. And he came into this game injured. They didn't know if he'd play or not because of his groin and his hamstring. So here we go with a final minute and two seconds and a four point Stanford lead 17 to 13 Notre Dame two of 19 for 64 yards and a touchdown tonight. Lavecchio is the quarterback out of the shotgun. Throws it down the middle and it is intercepted by Tank Williams. And that'll do it. Fifty four ticks remain on the clock and Stanford has a four point lead 17 to 13. And it's nice to visit with you all on a Thanksgiving weekend. We hope you've enjoyed your little time out on the farm at Stanford. Watch his head Keith. He's looking 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 where he's going to throw it yep. never comes off of him. Keeps yep. stepping up there throws into coverage and Tank Williams is there to make the interception. He led the safety to the ball with his eyes. Reading, 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 go to the football, make the pick. His own man, Fernandez, almost got in his way, but he went down and got it. And now all Stanford has to do is uh, run out the clock. 18 seniors playing their final game here at Stanford Stadium. Tank Williams, one of them. But you'll hear that name a long time on Sunday, I suspect. The clock is now running at the 47 seconds and stops. Well, these are just kids, and you know Lavecchio really feels the pain of that, but you can't win when you can't pass. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Julius Jones of Notre Dame. Julius had a big first half, 14 carries, 106 yards, and got hurt. Kenneth Tolan for Stanford, 18 carries, 133 yards, and a touchdown. And uh, there will be a lot of folks holding the door for him tomorrow. But for number seven, uh, Carlisle Holiday, it was a... Uh, Pretty good three quarters actually and uh, then he just couldn't get things done in the fourth quarter and uh, they had to give way to the man considered the better passer and Levecchio and he throws an interception. 
And so Bob Davey came to town at 4-5 with his Irish. They're going to leave town at 4-6. And their bowl hopes have gone a glimmering now. They've lost nine straight night games. And uh, they lost it very late. Less than two minutes to play when they scored the touchdown. And they go on to West Lafayette, Indiana next week to play the Purdue Boilermakers, who lost today to the Indiana Hoosiers. Lost nine straight night games. Yep. And this could be the darkest hour. I'd quit playing in the David. nighttime. I'd be looking for a noontime. Well, you know, he's, things may happen. I don't know. It's not my business, and it's not my business to speculate. As Stanford is trying to run out the clock here and doing a pretty good job of it as Randy Fasani runs down and picks up a first down. Fas Fasani now, he's had a good night. Returned. He's shaken the rust off. He'll play again surely next week against San Jose State, which will be the final game. And that is a game that Stanford better respect, too, because there have been times where the Spartans have jumped up and bit them. And uh, they could do it again. He's such a tough kid, you know, and he gives them such great leadership. But what a tough loss for Notre Dame. I mean, they were in control of this ball game for most of the night. Yep. Well, they're not. You can't accumulate with the circumstance of college football today. The limits you have on this and that and what have you. You just simply can't accumulate the talent pool that you used to be able to do. And uh, as a result of it, uh, your ranks are thin. and You get a few dings and knocks and people hurt and places and things happen. And the first thing you know, you're running out of people. I remember one time Michigan came to the Rose Bowl. They had 71 people. Ty Willingham telling us you don't want to wish bad on anybody, but he says they still have a shot at this Pac-10 title. So they want to keep winning and see what shakes out here. Sure. Of course, the Civil War next week with Oregon State and Oregon. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> that'll be a war. Woo. Yo, duck on the shrapnel. It'll be flying all over the place. Oh, yeah. One. And Oregon State's starting to play. Well, you saw what they did to the Washington Huskies. They, they hammered them. And then uh, Huskies stole uh, the Cougars, actually uh, helped uh, Washington a lot in losing that ball game. And then the Huskies go down to Miami tonight and just got pounded. You know, Frank Beamer's Virginia Tech Club is banged up, too. But I guarantee you he'll have them ready for Miami and Blacksburg next week. He might need uh, some Marines to help him. I think you're right. Wow, what a game down there in the Orange Bowl tonight. Hmm. Clock is going to run away here. It's 20 seconds, and this ball game is going to go into the history books. As Stanford wins again at home against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The record was 10 and 5 coming in. It is now 10 and 6 overall. And uh, the final seconds are ticking away. It is the final score of Stanford 17 and Notre Dame 13. ABC Sports Online, ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Join ABC Sports Monday night as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the St. Louis Rams. This is a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.